Must be ecstatic getting a win against arguably the best team in the comp on their home court. How do you feel about that win? The the message, and and this is not trying to be cliche or anything along these lines, but you know the message rolling in was right now we're at a level where it's not about the wins or losses. Like we're we're trying to establish some real, you know, uh, team collaborative. Um, issues that we need to correct and fix and one of it is uh, you know, we broke it down to multiple different categories but consistency right we've done this a couple of weeks ago we lose to Illawarra and we come back and we beat Sydney right um, don't get me wrong great to get a road win great to get back in the winner circle and all that but if we put our feet up and decide that oh all those issues are fixed you know we're kidding ourselves so um, you know this probably just ticks a box in a sense of uh, the progression we want to go in. We've identified some things, but to act like we made some massive strides in 36 hours, no. So um, stick to the process. Uh, no one cares what you did yesterday. Um, and that's, that's the message moving forward. You made a lot of changes to your rotation in response to that loss against Brisbane a couple of days ago. What was the decision making behind that one? Again, sort of, uh, you know, I, I have a tight rotation. I've always had it. And, um, you know, that was when we talked about the coaches but even the, the playing group you know I don't know who my main eight are so we're just going to keep exploring it until we find it um, I thought Josh and uh, Jonah were great in the fourth quarter against Brisbane so that was the momentum we want to roll through you know I don't care um, what your expectations are um, and again like the reality is, is when we roll in and we play I think Sydney on the Thursday Josh better bring it you know if Josh doesn't bring it in the first five minutes he's going to find himself and the end of the bench again. And this is what's important for the whole team and the message moving forward is um, you've got to be consistent. Yeah, just one second, sorry, one second. <coughs> Don't have to start again, do we? <laughs> <coughs> My answer's going to be shorter. <laughs> one word. Yep, that's it. You're allowed to drink yeah. those if you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, one player that was great for his guys in next year, Dr. Roberts. How do you see his impact on his best game for the season so far? How do you see his impact tonight? Yeah, like, huge, right? Like, the stat sheet showed it, uh, the energy on the court showed it, and that's what we were really looking for was the energy. And, um, you know, if, if Josh didn't have 22 points, you know, and let's say he halved that, the impact he made just by his energy and effort out there was, you know, really important. And so, um, credit to him. And Josh, 22 points for you tonight. How'd you feel? Probably your best game this season. How'd you feel out there tonight for you? I felt good and confident. Um, and then from a player's perspective, what's what's the the playing group like after such a such a big win? What's the playing group like? After, what's the emotion after such a big win? I mean, it's uh, the it's good energy in the locker room right now. You know, guys just hoping to feed off into it for the next game and just going into next week's practice and just keeping that same mentality. Is it, is it fun playing in a, with a backcourt like Patrick Miller and, and Tashir McCall? Yeah, playing with those two for guys? sure it is. It is. It's exciting. And it, they both helped me out a lot. Yeah. Um, 40, what, what have you like <coughs> with Miller today? 30 points, 10 assists. I mean, his impact was, was huge, not only this game, but throughout the season. He's been a real focal point for you guys. What have you, you liked about him? He, I mean, this, this is what's great about Pat, right? There's probably more shots I wanted him to take. And, you know, at half time, he's got 21 and he's telling me to run a particular play for a teammate. And then we come out of a timeout and he wants to run something. And even there was a stretch in the fourth where um, he tried to make the pass to Josh on the roll when he was there at the rim. Um, he's so unselfish. He's, he's, he's such a great, you know, to have an import of his calibre that can do what he does and engage his teammates um, is pretty special and important to have. So, um, no, he was fantastic on multiple levels. Um, 31 team fouls in the game for you guys. Is, is that something you, you look at that you need to work on for, for next week at all? The narrative for Bulls been unfair, and this is something I need to address, <laughs> right? And people will say I'm complaining or whatever it is, but we go through and review the Tasmania game, and it's all the commentary. And so you can't tell me that's not going to influence people people in general so no we won't change we'll stay with what we're doing because it has been working and I think everybody needs to um, you know stop listening to people who feel like their opinions are important you had that short turnaround <coughs> uh, on Thursday against Sydney what do you need to take from this game today to, to take against Sydney on Thursday that again what we've done tonight doesn't matter right good job, we tick the box, this is a whole different beast. And, you know, we need to be switched on to the task at hand. 
you know, we can't we can't have the robust video sessions where we got guys holding each other accountable and then roll into this next one and like it's all kumbaya singing around a campfire. Um, um, this is what consistency is and right now we're still in the process of trying to figure that out. And me too. Like, I'm not seeing you acting like I got all the answers. That was the first thing I said. I don't know. Like, <clears throat> I had 48 hours ago, I had Josh and Jonah outside of my eight and now they start and cool. It's, it's almost comparative to the next man up but everybody's fit so um, yeah we're interested to see what rolls out Jonathan, uh, Josh since you came to Kansas the most I've seen you smile this weekend since, uh, since you started playing with the tight ends how fun is it out there playing with the guys and, and for yourself it's fun I just like playing my part bringing the energy and just enjoying it man it's been a great process. To piggyback on the back of that too, his attitude's been fantastic, you know, and this is the thing, I, I know you referenced like the first time I've seen him smile. He's always smiling. He's always, always upbeat. He's always celebrated his teammates. When he registered a DMP in Perth, he was still first up off the bench, acknowledging his teammates for their effort and hustle. And, and, and this is also why we like, why I like giving um, these type of opportunities, knowing that uh, the personality of Josh and what he's capable of doing, he capitalised on it. And we're just going to keep going with that. We can't, the, the worst thing that Josh can do, and this is for you now, is yeah. start reading your own hype. And yeah. This is it's a good thing about the NBL because the there's everyone's got a podcast and there's articles and yeah. and then suddenly people start sniffing their own farts and deciding that they're that dude, right? So you got to stay humble. You got to keep that balance. Um, stop reading these goddamn award watches this early in the season. No one cares. The reality too is, someone has a good weekend. Like Perth, for example, they all wanted to sack John really and Cotton was a wash, and now it's like they're all back on the hype train. Just relax, let the season play out, stop with all the garbage and, and, and stay locked in the task yeah. at hand. There you go, little rant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Josh, uh, Chris. Beautiful, is that it? No, go on. Oh. Chris, Chris, you're you're the best, mate. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Um, your, your offense has been a bit of a struggle, but it wasn't tonight, and it's against, you know, probably what's widely regarded as the best offensive defensive team in the league. How were you able to get such an offensive load tonight? I don't know where this is going. There's Trev Gleeson right now sitting in his living room smiling. <laughs> I had a I had a six year master's degree in flex, um, and I've been I've been. Um, not wanting to, like, trying to build my own identity as a coach. Uh, i got a different different identity defensively with what we do, um, but I wanted to try and build my own identity on the offensive end. It's been trash for years. I've never had a good offensive rating. Um, so that was a bit of self-reflection for myself, too, to go, all right, well, we sit here and talk about our struggles, putting the hole in the basket. A lot of that falls on things I'm trying to create that um, doesn't work. And you look at the lineup we have, you know, with Josh, Sam, Sam, AK, guys who have this incredible ability to set screens and put them in a position for offensive rebounding. Uh, we've got a pass first point guard, like with Taron, similar to what they had in Perth all those years ago, and scoring on the perimeter, like it was bound to happen. So thanks, Trev. Appreciate the playbook um, and the six years education on it. And I think we'll stick for it with it for a little bit longer. That was going to be my follow up. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Where did you decide to use the flex tonight, and how much how much have you worked with it? I mean, were the players ready to to, to, to go for that because it? That's what the, the FIBA break was great. They had no choice for the playing group. Um, and it was that, I mean, we couldn't even tick over 70 points for some games. So, um, yeah, I had to, I had to uh, just, like, bring out the archives and all the hard drives and give myself a little refresher on it and throw it in there. And, and trust me, like, I'm sure Trevor's sitting there picking it apart for all its flaws. You know, benefit, yeah, credit to the guys. It was, what, three practices, a little bit against yeah. Brisbane in the first half and, and now tonight, and we'll keep getting better for it. But, uh, um, yeah, look, you know, I can't expect the guys to uh, be better if I can't be better myself. And, you know, there's a moment where you sit here and go, I've coached a pretty good defence my entire head coaching career, um, but every year my offence has been fairly average, so um, that's poor, more on me than anyone else. That's yeah. the last one for me. Josh, have you, have you experienced a place offence much before, and would you like to stick with it as a team? Yeah, I actually ran it in, in high school back in Alabama. Like, my coach taught us that earlier, so, like, it was just easier for me to pick up on because I never really forgot it because I ran it so much. Oh, epic. Thanks very much. Yeah, Thank sir. you. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.